Hey guys, I'm back and it's official. This is my last instalment of the 31 days of tarot hashtag created by the lovely Ethany and I've actually done it. <laughs> I'm quite surprised. I'm feeling so sick still. I'm very glad that I've only got a few left and I'm just going to jump straight in. Question 27 to 31 is what I'm doing today. Question 27 is share my first professional reading experience. So either as a reader or a seeker. Now, in all honesty, I genuinely don't remember my first professional reading. It still probably would have been in my early teens, maybe just before that. Um, I visited quite a few kind of mind, body and spirit festivals and they often have a lot of tarot readers there and I recall having a few readings. I just can't recall how they went or much content. I mean, if they went badly, I would probably have remembered. Um, so they must have gone well. I did have an amazing reading from a friend on Instagram who is a professional reader who at the time we didn't really know each other that well and it's it was a really bizarre experience because it's the first time that someone's told me things about me with incredible certainty um and it was it wasn't a written one she did loads of mini videos for me and she was so sure she wasn't just doing like a cold calling thing saying things that could have been relevant to anyone it was really bizarre she did tell me things that there is just no way in earth that I have shared, discussed. That really opened my eyes to a different type of reading. So that was really awesome. And in terms of my first professional reading, again, I don't remember my first, first. I could probably look back because as most of you know, I'm more new to professional readings in terms of charging for them. But I think it was one of my one of my friends but in the very near stages of doing my professional readings I actually had someone approach me and they're a professional, they're a creator, they're someone who I really respect who's been doing this for a really long time and they said that they'd been called to get a reading from myself and I'll be honest you guys I've been doing professional readings for all of, I'd done like five and I asked them if they were sure <laughs> because I didn't know what else to say. The feedback I got was not only amazing but sometimes when you get good feedback and I know this sounds really weird it's very short to the point it's not a problem at all but it was really helpful feedback it was really positive really encouraging very much kind of stop charging ridiculous amounts for your readings you know put a proper price on them you have something to give other people and I really wasn't expecting that it's it's been really really awesome actually because you shouldn't really need to hear from someone else something to give you more faith in a reading but you can practice things in theory a million times but when you get feedback um, and I do encourage people to give me constructive feedback as well. When you get feedback that you can actually do something with, or it really gives you an insight into the other person's experience, it's really helpful as a reader when you're starting off as a professional, at least in my experience. And every experience is different. And I found myself thinking, okay, I work with people on a one-to-one -one basis, but this is different. And are these skills transferable? I work differently to other people who do tarot readings and to get that kind of feedback was really insightful and useful for me in terms of having an awareness that this is a way of working with people which some people are going to resonate with and some people are going to enjoy it. It really was something that shifted gears in terms of me offering myself out there as a professional reader on a larger scale. Question 28 is share one celebrity that you would refuse to read for no matter how much they paid you and why. This is probably my least favourite prompt and whilst I have an answer I've kind of bowed out of this one a little bit. 
Basically, I have a very slender knowledge of celebrities to start with. So the celebrities that I do pay a lot of attention to are generally ones that I like. And other than that, I keep up to date with politics. And I guess because they're in the limelight, you could they're not really celebrities in the same capacity. But the only people that I am incredibly aware of that come to mind who I have that much of a, a negative energy and feeling about that I wouldn't want to read for them are probably political people. Now, on my live on Instagram yesterday, I did actually discuss my answer. However, I've had a bit of a think about it. And whilst... I do really love sharing things in the YouTube community. I just kind of decided I didn't want to get political on my Instagram right now because I'm always going to piss someone off and I don't really want to put myself out into the YouTube world and open myself up to get shit from other people. Therefore, I've decided not to share. However, what I would say is some of my thoughts that come up while I was thinking about this question was with people in the limelight, especially celebrities, it's hard to truly know them. And I think that that element comes into play a lot. And I'm sure that other people have said this. I've seen a few videos where people have said, "Can how much can we really know about someone who's in the limelight? Also, I saw some people discussing about being able to put your feelings aside and work with someone as naturally we're not here to work on our judgments of others, which I wholeheartedly agree with. However, for me, I do think that there's a certain point that there's a line. I like to be aware of my limitations. That is something that's important to me. And I think that there's a crossover between that kind of judgment and a sheer dislike for someone, their energy, the energy that you hold for them, um, and the amount of negative transference that would happen. And in that case, I most certainly wouldn't read for them. So despite not answering, believe me when I say there are people in politics who couldn't pay me all the money in the world to read for them, it just wouldn't happen. It doesn't, money doesn't bother me that much. Um, and also on a more celebrity side of things, I would say as a general rule, I probably wouldn't read for any celebrities who do that kind of reality TV show, let's film everything that happens in our whole entire life. Because... I wouldn't want to be a part of the whole hoopla and I don't like the drama and all of the things that are attached to it just don't interest me at all. So that's my roundabout skimmy out of an answer. Question 29. What are my beliefs around the mechanics of a reading? How do I think it works? Is it my subconscious, higher self, spirit, etc and so forth? As a whole, I feel like the mechanics of tarot depends on the individual. The reason that this popped into my mind, for example, one of the things that I don't have is a clear. So if someone does have a clear, then that's probably going to come into play in the mechanics of their tarot. And I didn't want to say, oh, this is the mechanics of tarot. And it seemed like I wasn't open to other people's ways of reading. I think that it depends on the individual. For me, predominantly, I the way that I work and what I believe is that tarot allows us to engage with our emotions, thoughts, etc. Things that we may have detached from, both our sub and unconscious aspects of self and begin to explore our conscious and develop self-awareness. I don't believe in a specific entity, however I do believe in energy exchange, um, both with other people and that there are energies outside of that as well and that transference. I also believe in higher self but for me the way that I would look at higher self is the rest of our brain, for example. So bearing in mind that we only use around 10% of our brain, apart from a few miraculous humans out there as a general rule. And I feel like it would be silly of me to assume that there aren't things going on outside myself or others that we can't yet comprehend, understand, knowing about the lack of use of the rest of our human brain. And the fact that we're learning things all the time. 
when I talk about energy and transference, I don't, however, believe the energy comes from the actual cards. I don't think that they hold specific power in themselves. I feel like this is something that we psychologically and energetically put into our tools and those tools utilise our engagement and management and access to these aspects of ourselves. Um, and also intuition, which again, I would see intuition as both an energetical occurrence and a access to those other elements of our brain and energy transfer. And again, I'm repeating myself, but I think that higher self and intuition is encompassed by a lot of different things. And as I'm explaining, I'm seeing myself moving my hands loads and you can't see me, but um, I feel quite it's something I'm quite passionate and interested about exploring the aspects of how we work with intuition and energy and just being very honest and saying I I don't fully don't think that any of us fully know I think that that's fair to say without offending anyone <laughs> question 30 what is the most culturally diverse deck I own Really interesting question. Um, I own a lot of themed decks, uh, a lot of animal decks, a lot of nature decks, and the, I don't, I don't feel that I genuinely own a culturally diverse deck yet. The reason being is that for me, culturally diverse is ma like many more aspects than simply showing lots of different ethnicities. The deck that had originally come to my mind is, of course, my trusty medicine woman tarot. I don't feel that this is a culturally diverse deck in a rounded way. Um, so let's flick through some cards and I'll try. I've written what I'm saying down and I'm having to read from the side of me. So this deck was created by Carol Bridges and many of you will know, who own the deck at least, that Carol's vision was to show a whole culture. So she described it as a oneness where people came together and basically they amalgamated all of the cultures and the diversities into one culture. This was kind of her ideal vision, which as long as the incorporation of all of those is equal and respected in an ideal world that I I can't know because it hasn't happened but it, it certainly feels like it's a nice vision to have had and because of that I don't feel that the deck necessarily shows cultures in the way that some of the other decks I've seen have this is definitely more diverse in terms of ages, ethnicities, however it is an aged deck and obviously as we move through the world and we learn and we understand things more I think that it's safe to say that whilst there are different cultural aspects in this deck there is a heavier lean towards some of the aspects of Native American in particular, which is possibly where people get the hump or get confused with this deck, because if you don't own the book, you it doesn't discuss her vision in the Little White Book or her reason behind creating the deck. I just didn't want to say, yes, this is a culturally diverse deck, and people feel that I wasn't really understanding it, because, as I say, I feel like there is more that's included in our cultures there's so much more to each of our individual cultures that this deck doesn't explore and whilst the ideal behind it is gorgeous you're not necessarily going to learn about loads of different cultures by owning this deck it's interesting because after watching it looking at other people's culturally diverse decks their definition of it and kind of trying to see if they're is one that is more inclusive which is definitely on my radar there are a few decks that have caught my eye so if i get one i'll be sure to let everyone know and question 31 the last question you guys sorry that there's not been much going on in this video 
um, for you to watch. Hopefully you like my sort of makeshift altar space. This is where I read. The last question is, what are your favourite tarot apps? Do you work with them on what platform, smartphone, tablet, etc.? I don't really use tarot apps on the on a grand scale. Basically what happened is when I found out about tarot apps, I got several of them so that I could trial what it was like working with the deck before making a decision on the deck. One of the tarot apps was the Wildwood. It really helped me. I think that one of the amazing things about tarot apps, and despite I don't personally use them, it's really good that they're available because you can see all of the cards and I know that you can see a walkthrough but you can zoom in and have a look at the details and get a feel for the deck on more than just a video so for several days usually if I'm having difficulty deciding on a deck I'll have already watched a couple of walkthroughs and I want to know a bit more about the mechanics behind that specific deck or at least get an idea of how I resonate with the details in the artwork. It did really help with this one. Other than that, the only other tarot app that I do engage with and that I do use is actually the Shadowscapes Tarot. I got the Shadowscapes Tarot app ages back. Everyone went on about the Shadowscapes and then I just never used it. Honestly, I didn't even open it after I downloaded it. That's terrible, but I didn't. I downloaded it with a few others and kind of got drawn into those. Then the latter part of last year, I did a trade with someone and they were doing the Czech version of Shadowscapes which the card the cardstock is bigger and one of the things that had always put me off was the despite loving small cardstock was not being able to see the details properly um this cardstock's phenomenal as well it's a bit glossy but it's got i've only got a few cards out it's got this lovely matte gilding and the imagery is certainly a nice size I know people wanted even bigger even bigger this is probably as big as I would go on a tarot deck ideally or wider but shorter um, I've got tiny hands people and basically with this deck I had heard amazing things about Bar. is it Barbara Moore let's just double check before I give her a name yes it is Barbara Moore um, I'd heard amazing things about her writing, I'd never actually read any of her work and whilst I don't think, if anyone's wondering about this deck and concerned because unless you can read the language the guidebook's no good to you, for me personally I don't feel like it's hard to understand what's going on in each card, it's very easy to learn what each card is, um, even on the majors I feel and obviously they've still got the numbers it's really up to you but I don't feel that you need a book and obviously a lot of the time I'm reading I'm not using the book however I wanted to read this and get an idea for her vision and her experience of this deck and I tell you what it felt really poetic she writes so beautifully and that's the amazing thing about these tarot apps is that they give you access to the whole guidebook that in itself for me is invaluable and I think that it opens up a space that if you wanted to trade a deck with someone or that guidebook's no longer being purchased that if they've got the app out there for a small fee you can have access to the book and okay it's not a visual copy but it also means you can travel with a deck and you don't have to sling a book around with you. Um, I've really enjoyed reading it. And this is such a gorgeous deck. I really didn't think that I would go for this deck. But I love the artist. I've been following her for years. So that tarot app does get used occasionally. And it says here what platform. So the platform is my smartphone on Android. And that's it you guys. I hope that it hasn't been too rambly. I know that there's not always stuff going on in the frame whilst you're listening to me, but I've tried to keep them short and sweet. 
thank you to Ephany for creating them because I know it's like her third year I think and I watched them last year but I didn't have my channel set up then and I really wanted to get a chance to have a go at them. I'm really quite proud of myself that despite being so ill that I've managed to keep up with them and I've really enjoyed some of the questions. I loved seeing people's artwork. I mean, how many artists are out there, you guys? You secret hidden artists in the tarot community. It's just wow. Um, and it's been very respectful, very diverse in people's opinions. It's just been really interesting. I've loved watching everyone's videos. That's all from me, you guys. So thank you for watching. Feel free to comment below and get involved. And other than that, I'll see you guys later. Bye.